Steve, thank you very much indeed. Um, it's great to have this opportunity to, to share with everyone. Lily, I was so excited that both of us independently um, had um, gone for um, titles of Beatles songs in our presentations, not least because I don't know if you can hear in my voice, I'm actually from Liverpool um, originally, and there's a slight Liverpoolian twang, and um, I, I deliberately moved my Liverpool FC calendar so it was in the background of my office in school, so it would, um, it would be there as I was doing this um, presentation. And the brief I was given was to use that um, network of the International Confederation of Principles that um, Steve has just mentioned to just do a little bit of thinking about how is it that systems can support leaders so that they in turn can support their teachers and enable them to flourish? What, what, can, what can governments and systems do to make the conditions um, easier for uh, leaders and teachers? How can they help them to flourish? What can they do um, that's gonna offer um, particular um, support? Um, and in order to get that sort of international perspective, um, I, I, I contacted uh, leaders in Europe and Australia and in Africa and China, and they all came back with some thoughts they had about the role of government, um, not just things that were on a wish list, but also things they'd seen being done that they felt were making a difference, but were helping them to enable their teachers to succeed and to flourish. And just to give a little bit of a, a control group as well, um, in my own school, um, we have a teaching and learning group of students. Um, so often it's easy to ask students their views about things like, you know, what, what should we serve, what should be on the menu at lunchtime and so on, and not to ask them about the core purpose of schools. So we ask them about um, teaching and learning issues. So uh, with a bit of help from Gwen, my, my, my deputy, we, we said to him, well, what's your opinion? What's your view um, about all of this? Um, and we got a range of answers. The thing that really excites me is how much what I heard from these leaders from across the world and also from this group of students, how much it resonates with what we have already heard um, from these wonderful teacher presentations. Um, and also from that wonderful keynote that we just had now from um, Lily that um, uh, uh, has so inspired all of us. So um, let's just move on and, and see our next sort of um, slide. But broadly, I would say the ideas and comments and suggestions came under three broad topics. And the first one, a lot about resourcing. And, and um, uh, the, the first part of that was that one of the big things that systems can do is to provide um, the key resource, which is teachers and others who are gonna work within schools. Would we just see our next slide as well, please? That'd be brilliant. Um, if we just move that on, well, thank you. Um, but um, there was a sense that if it was possible to focus not just on recruiting high quality teachers and indeed other staff, but also retaining them. Um, there's an Australian principal at the top there who, who references some places where it's hard to retain teachers. Um, I know in England where I work, um, in the first couple of years of teaching, there's a really high dropout rate of teachers, something like 35, 40%. Um, and um, it was very interesting to hear um, this thought from a, a principal in Ireland who felt that um, bringing in a system of mentoring for newly qualified teachers to enable um, the system to retain those teachers who've been recruited was gonna play a really important part um, in resourcing the system properly. Um, and I know that's also a focus in the English system. We'll just move it on to the next slide, please. But the comments went beyond just the, the, the first couple of years of um, teaching, there was a really strong sense from everyone I heard from that professional development, ongoing professional development was, was essential. If you see the next slide. Um, and um, it was very interesting from this European colleague. They saw professional development as a way to help 
um, teachers prefer, prepare for different roles as they move through their careers. Um, but there was another take on professional development, which came from this um, colleague in China um, and also from the pupil, I quote at the bottom there, that professional development, it's not just a way to prepare you for different stages of your career, your journey through the profession, but it's also a way to make sure that you can connect more easily, that you're up to date from the perspective of that student, but you know what's going on in industry and that you can help them plug in to up-to-date developments. Um, and that, um, that sense of empowerment, which is a word we've heard a great deal of already today, was something that was seen as hugely important. If we could just move it on, please. Um, and the experience of this student who saw um, that for teachers to flourish, what do they need? Modern, innovative resources. Um, but they needed to be able to make use of digital solutions. Lily talked to us about um, the folly of trying to do education on the cheap. Um, students and leaders wanted to see a system that was properly resourced so that the teachers have the tools that they needed to display that love um, in action. And one other thing they mentioned, if we just see the next one, and I promise uh, we didn't put any pressure on them to say this at all, colleagues, um, but how's this from this student? I believe that governments should provide teachers with a higher salary for the effort they put in. Um, I thought it was very perceptive because in the end, you do need to properly resource the system and pay is part of it. I hadn't expected to hear this from a Chinese colleague, um, but one of the key things they saw to helping their system, helping their teachers flourish, was to increase the sense of gain and so happiness for their teachers. Okay, if we just move on a little bit. So resourcing was seen as really important by my colleagues and by my students, but also a sense of looking after the whole person. If we just move on, please. Yeah, a, a real sense, but there's a great deal of stress, of pressure in the system, which we've already heard a great deal about. And if we just hear the next set of voices, please. Um, I was really struck by the contrast between the two answers that I capture on this slide. He is a leader in South Africa talking about their administrative workload that they feel overwhelmed by, compliance, ticking boxes. What does this pupil, this is a pupil I know, really bright, straight A student, he is gonna do brilliantly. What does he think really matters? Happiness, encouragement, caring, those are the things he really wants. Those are the things that are gonna help his teachers and help him in return. Can we just move on a little bit? And also um, the need to look after people. And just, yeah, the next slide as well, please. Um, but um, there needs to be a consideration, not piling more and more pressure on teachers, but we don't help teachers by saying, well, we'll take the pressure off them and instead put the pressure instead on the leaders. Because if the leaders are going to support their teachers, they need to have that space to breathe that we've already talked about um, already. Um, but there needs to be some of that professional space, some of that concern for the whole person, but perhaps we become more aware about recently, but that needs to continue. We do not want any of us to return to a high pressure system. And there was, um, if we just move on, please, one final strand of thoughts, of feedbacks, of how systems could support leaders so that they in turn can help their teachers um, to flourish. And it was aspects, I suppose you would say, of policy. And again, some of what was said, I found very striking. He was the first suggestion for, for education policy, that consistency matters. Let's have a look at this comment from a school principal in Africa. Um, it's time 
for governments to decide what good schools look like um, and make it concrete. Um, in their view, this picture changes constantly. I was just thinking about this. Um, I've actually been a school leader. I've been a, a head teacher for 23 years. And what was defined as good 23 years ago in the English system, which admittedly is not one I would particularly suggest anyone copied, what was defined as good 23 years ago is completely different from what is defined as being good now or is what is de defined as being good 10 years ago. Consistency and focused upon that quality of teaching and learning is tremendously important. We heard earlier from Lily, change for change sake helps nobody. Just see our next slide, please. The second thing that jumped out and that we've heard so much about already today was trust. But trust can be a policy priority. I can remember when I was president of the English Leaders Association, um, uh, ASCL, I had to have a theme for the year and the theme was trust to transform. In other words, but our system needs greater trust in every direction. There needs to be greater trust from government to teachers, but also in return. Um, but in a way, compliance and accountability can be an actual demonstration of a lack of trust. I think one of those things, one of those positives that Trista was reminding us about a few minutes ago, is that there has been a need to demonstrate greater trust because some of the challenges uh, that the pandemic has presented. What we don't want to do is go back to a system of low trust, a system where you have to fill in all these boxes so we know what you're, what you're doing. Otherwise, there's no telling what you might get up to. I've been so struck, so inspired by what we've heard from Lily, and from our colleagues about what happens if we free teachers to use their professional skills and their professional autonomy. Trust as a policy aim is actually a very powerful one to have. And thirdly in the policy area, but I think very powerfully, this came through. Can we see our next slide, please? Um, it's quite a well-known picture, but it came from a, um, a colleague um, in South Africa. Um, and I remember her talking about the South African experience of equity. Perhaps if we just see this, this last slide here. But um, in order for leaders to support their teachers and enable them to flourish, there needs to be a focus on equity. Um, but um, only so much can be done if um, some schools don't have the resources that they need. If there is a sense, as that Australian colleague says there, of there being have and have not schools, that we come back to one of the core um, values that underpins our work in ARC, the need for there to be equity. As I've said, what strikes me so powerfully is what we've heard from our colleagues as teachers, what, what we were inspired to hear from Lily just now, what we've heard from school leaders across the different corners of the world, and what we've heard from a group of students are all taking us in that same set of directions and perhaps gives us a set of positive um, moves that we can make as hopefully the world begins to emerge from the shadow of COVID and a series of positive things that we can do. Thank you.